Welcome to MTG Friends, I'm Ryan, and in this episode we're going to talk about milling cards, or mill decks, or the milling mechanic. Technically it's not a mechanic, it's more of a play style, or a type of card. Um, where did this all originate? Well, it originated in antiquities in 1994 with a card called Millstone, which is going to be something we talk about in the top cards in this episode. Um, what's the point of milling decks? Well, the point, as you probably already know, is you wanna get their 40 card deck, 60 card deck, 100 card commander deck, down to no cards left, so when they draw their next card that doesn't exist, you auto win the game. If they don't have a card to draw, they lose. So that's why milling decks have always been around since 1994. Um, in certain sets, they've been super strong. In others, they're always playable. So, jumping right in, in the top spot, in no particular order, Jace Memory Adept, which is a Planeswalker, three colorless, blue, blue, with draw a card, target player puts the top card of his or her library into his or her graveyard. That seems obvious. But this next one is what's really the killer for no uptick or no downtick at all target player puts the top 10 cards of his or her library into his or her graveyard <laughs> oh that's nasty that's just mean but hey that's what a mill deck is all about next up is nemesis of reason three colorless blue black leviathan horror it is a three power seven toughness creature which has, when Nemesis of Reason attacks, defending player puts the top 10 cards of his or her library into his or her graveyard. Oh, anytime you're putting like 10 or more cards into someone's graveyard, uh, you're, you're doing good. You're doing good. Um, and what's another nice thing is mill, mill decks tend to not have heavy, beefy creatures. Well, this is a 3-7, so... Having this kind of board presence is great because you can keep people you can keep people off you from attacking with weenies, etc. 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 Alright, so like we said in the top of the episode, Millstone, which is a two colorless artifact from antiquities, with a costing two, take the top two cards from target player's library and put them in target player's graveyard. Oh, it's just great. It's not very costly, only costs two to drop, costs another two to keep reoccurring, um, dropping two cards into their graveyard. Next up is Ulamog the Ceaseless Hunger. This thing is Gigantosaurus Rex. It is 10 mana, legendary creature Eldrazi, a 10-10 indestructible. When you cast Ulamog the Ceaseless Hunger, exile two target permanents. Which means that because it is cast, quote unquote cast, it cannot be countered. Um, the card can be countered, but the exiling to target permanence happens regardless of whether it gets countered or not. But if it doesn't get countered and it hits the battlefield and it happens to survive until the next turn, which is a few variables here, if it attacks, when Ulamog attacks, defending player exiles the top 20 cards of his or her library not to mention that it's a 10 10 swinger holy shnikes this thing is bad mamma jamma don't need to say anything else about Ulamog. all right next up is consuming aberration now this is a three colorless blue black creature horror with a star slash star um from gate crash set Consuming Aberration's power and toughness are equal to the number of cards in your opponent's graveyard. Oh my, my, my. So if you're already milling them to death, that thing is going to be, what, a 10-10? A 20-20? A 25-25? Oh, it could be gigantic, Soros. Just gigantic. When you cast a spell, each opponent reveals cards from the top of his or her library until he or she reveals a land card then puts those cards into his or her graveyard. And this includes the land. So 
it just keeps getting bigger and bigger the longer it can survive on the board. So it's definitely going to be a target the second it hits that play field. All right, next up is Hedron Crab, which is just a measly blue uh, mana creature crab. It's got some lame stacks stats. You know, it's an O2, but it has landfall. Whenever a land enters the battlefield under your control, target player puts the top three cards on his or her library into his or her graveyard. Boy, you get this thing early on in the battlefield, they're going to have to deal with it or else they're just going to keep getting milled and milled and milled almost every turn. Because you're probably going to be playing a land almost every turn. Uh, it might be an O2, but it's a it's a weenie blocker, and they're going to have to spend a spell to get rid of it for sure, or else they're just going to keep getting milled and milled until they have a very unhappy, pleasant day. Next up, Glimpse, the unthinkable. Blue, black, sorcery from the Ravnica City of Guilds block. This thing is so powerful for a blue, black. Target player puts the top 10 cards of their library into their graveyard. This has definitely got to get the VIP sticker award because this thing was main boarded in so many decks then. Um, it, it was just a great, great milling card. Still is. Still is. Like I said, anytime you can put 10 cards at a time into somebody's graveyard, that's pretty sweet. Archive Trap. Three colorless blue blue instant dash trap. I find it interesting that they put the word trap in there. Uh, I guess they just really wanted us to know that it was a trap, even though it's an instant. Oh well, whatever. If an opponent searches his or her library this turn, you may pay nothing rather than pay archive traps mana costs. Hoo wee! A spell for nothing? Loving it. Target opponent puts the top 13 cards of his or her library into his or her graveyard. So if you're tapped out, it's their turn. They go do a, a tutor of some kind. You can smack them with this thing. Oh, <laughs> there goes another 13. Oh, happy times, happy times. All right, traumatize three colorless blue, blue sorcery. Uh, target player puts the top half of his or her library rounded down into his or her graveyard. Man, this thing is potent. And if you happen to have had like a fraying sanity on the board already and then you play Traumatize, oh man, oh man, oh man, that is nasty. That might be game over right then and there. All right, Psychic Corrosion. Two colorless blue enchantment. Whenever you draw a card, each opponent puts the top two cards of their library into their graveyard. Great card for three. Super duper. And this is especially potent because it's when you draw a card. So, very cool. Needn't say more about that one. Next up is Mind Funeral, which is a sorcery, one colorless blue black. Target opponent reveals cards from the top of his or her library until four land cards are revealed. That player puts all cards revealed this way into his or her graveyard. For three mana, this thing is ridiculously powerful. I mean, holy moly. It's going to siphon off a lot of their cards. Might be a finisher card. It'll definitely do some damage in the beginning. All right, so some honorable mentions. We got Phanax, God of Deception. Gods are always super powerful. This thing has great uh, milling mechanics. Don't know if you'd put this in one of your decks or not, but I figured I'd mention it because it is a great card. Tomb, Scour, great card. Cheapo for five. Fraying Sanity, combo with the Traumatize. Oh, like I was saying earlier, this thing is great. And then a sneaker into the list for honorable mention Honorable mention is Startled Awake. Uh, these cards where you play it and then you flip it, love these kinds of mechanics. Um, and then it comes back into your hand. I mean, you can keep playing this. Great card uh, in terms of an honorable mention. All right, so... I'm going to go ahead and play a milling deck on MTG Arena. 
to end this episode, uh, just put together one for the current set and standard. Um, it's not necessarily a top meta, you know, top five tier or anything, uh, but it's it'll be fun to play, fun to watch. Stick around and we'll we'll do the MTG Arena. All right, so here's what we got going on. So I'm going to dump Ashiok in here because Uro is all over the play field, or all over the uh, meta. Uh, and it's it makes mill decks fairly difficult. So we're going to just sub them in. We're going to get rid of Teferi, Master of Time. Um, do, 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 do. And... We're running into a lot of countering, but I think this is where we want to go. Yeah. Actually, let's get rid of these two walls. Sideboard those in. Play a little counter action. And let's go milling. All right, mill, me mill mechanic. I always want to say mechanic. Mill archetype. What is this garbage? No. That's better. It's a little better. That's a little better. What do I want to dump? You. I need three lands. Three lands is the goal. Alright, I got a blocker. On turn two. Uh oh, looks like we're dealing with a euro, euro, euro deck, euro deck, a gyro deck. <laughs> what is, man? All right, get a blocker out there. So I guess I'll have to sub in Ashiok. In the next round, if I lose this moon. All right, here we go, buddy. Let's let's get this party started. Oh. No attacks. Oh. Extinction event. Saucy. Alright. Here here goes his Titan of Nature's Wrath. Going. And I'm just playing right into it. Which is the problem with doing a mill deck right now. I will cancel that out. I will. Didn't say please ya. You didn't say please ya. You didn't say please. You just didn't. You didn't. Got a lot of cards left. You didn't say please. Here comes Nissa. Two, four, five. Oh, maybe I'll play. Uh, maybe I'll play. What? I was not expecting that. Not expecting that at all. Whoa, not expecting that either. Didn't say please. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Very much. Groovy. Oh, 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 oh. Eskimo. Oh, 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 oh. Yavol. Yeah, sure, you betcha. Yeah, thanks. Thank you very much. Somebody's about to get whacked. Whack a mole. Whack a mole. All right, you're going to play. Going to play Uro. Ah, this is the worst part about. One, two. The worst part about playing Mill in this current standard world is that card right there. We're still gonna give it a shot though. We're gonna we're gonna make this happen. All right, he's got three up. So end of yep, and then we're gonna do this. Boop, 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 be doop, boop, boop, be doop. You gonna counter that? No, you're not. 32. We're getting there. We're getting there. Oh, I could use four cards. 
I could totally use four cards. So what we'll do is we'll draw a card, which will trigger the fairy's tutelage. Um, sure. And two more, sir. 28. And then we'll wait to draw a card until the end of his turn. He is running some gross stuff, though. He's got casualties of war. He might try. He might hit tutelage with that. Tutelage, tutelage, tutelage. Twenty-six left. Can we do it, folks? Can we do it? It is so satisfying to mill someone. It's dirty. It feels very, very dirty. But if we can manage it, then we will do it. 26 left. He's got three cards up. Uh, or three mana up. All right, yep, yep. You are the winner. You get to draw and gain life. We don't obviously care about his life. Total. Total. 25 left. He's about to... Oh, you are bananas. Uh, does that draw a card? I think it does. Yes, it does. I am totally cool with that. Boy, we are getting, getting to the finish line here. Trigger, 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 trigger. Yay. 16 left. Oh, it's so close. 14. <laughs> 14. Thirteen, twelve. I need that. We want that. And that won't matter at this point. And how about four more? Let's hit you for four more. One, two, three, four. And another four. Dooga, 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 dooga. Woo! Yay! Oh, we're down to four. We're down to four. Ah, he knew he was toasty, toasty. And that is how you run a mill deck. So satisfying. Let's just re let it ride. We got Ashiok in there. Yeah. Guess he put in some mystic disputes. Otherwise. Oh. Okay. <laughs> Whoop. Two. Ah, right, here comes his Uro. Titan. Here comes his Titan. Oh, nope. No, no Titan for you. All right, we're going to leave three open. Here comes Titan's Wrath. Oh, look at you. We're just we're just gonna ride this. We're gonna just gonna ride this. Mm, Cause the more land I put out, the bet no thank you. No, no, and no. Oh, he's gonna dispute that. Oh, I got lucky. Ho ho! Woo! Got lucky on that one. Mm-hmm. Who got lucky? This guy. This guy got lucky. You gonna play a you gonna play a Narset again, you little weasel. Oh, you got three up. I think you need to not play that too. Thank you, sir. Uh, he might rage quit if I do that too many times. Yeah. Okay. Boom. Shalaka laka. Yeah, you're gonna. 
Ja, Mann. Ja, Mann. Yeah, we're going to counter your counter. We're going to counter your counter. Because we are the count of the counters. Oh, lovely. We don't really need him at this point. Down to 35. I don't think we're going to make it. Oh, sad emoji face. Sad emoji face make me so sad. So sad. Uh, we don't really need land. You must draw cards. And we make you not draw. You must dump cards. You dump more cards. Oh, that is definitely what we need right there. Uh, she uh we're gonna have a problem with Vraska though. Vraska is a problem. Most definitely. Here comes nature's wrath. He's got two up, so I can't counter that. Nope. Cannot counter. Unfortunately, 29 cards. Ashia coming at ya. I play something else. Well, that is typical. All right. I think we were going to get him regardless. So, thanks for tuning in. This is MTG Friends. Be a friend of the gathering. Um, hope you enjoyed the video. Mill deck can be fun. It is, uh, <laughs> you're not making friends when you do it. All right. Uh, hit the subscribe button. Uh, hit the like button.